final part of the Robot Romance Marathon. If you haven't, please check part 1 and 2, the reviews of Compatler V and Voltus 5. I delved into the making of this series and my history growing up with Super Robot Tizen. So, Daimus is the third and last installment of the Robot Romance trilogy. It came out in 1978 and concluded in January 1979. This anime has the most significance and impact on the rest of the series. It took the progress of Compatler V and Voltus V to evolve the genre and kick it into full gear, combining what made them good while breaking all the rules of the genre with a not so traditional final battle and be heavy on politics and romance. It capped off the 70s Super Robot anime, as three months later, the original 1979 Gundam aired, a perfect transition to a new era. If you can't tell already, Daimos is my favorite in the trilogy. And I don't know if that is an unpopular opinion or not, but throughout the video I will explain why that's the case for me. I love everything about it, heck, at its heart, it's a romance anime before it's a robot anime. And I'm a sappy dude who loves the robot genre, the stars aligned. I can see the team reach their full vision with this anime by embracing the romantic aspect of storytelling. And I discovered Daimus like most people I know, through the Super Robot Tizen series with his debut in Super Robot Tizen 4 on the Super Famicom in 1995. My brother bought the game later that year, and to give some perspective, G Gundam just finished airing, and it was a big deal in my country. So when I saw Daimus in the game, I went like, this is a fighter like G Gundam, and I fell in love. That's when I learned what influenced G Gundam in the first place. Discovering the root of inspirations is one of my favorite joys. I'm a host of appreciating the origins of everything. A quick rant, Super Robot 4 was remade as Super Robot F and F Final on the PS1 and the Saturn, one of the best games in the series, though they did not include Daimus. Why? Broke my heart and thoroughly pissed me off. Thankfully, Daimus appeared in Alpha 2 and 3, A and MX. I wish he is a regular in the series, but he appeared in one of the better games in the franchise, so I shouldn't complain. So Daimus tells the story of the Bomb Empire. This alien race escaped their planet because it's not livable anymore and is searching for a new home, and Earth is perfect for them. So the invasion begins. From the beginning, they gave an apparent reason why they are invading Earth, not just for a conquest. The actual bomb people are living inside of a small colony in the Jupiter orbit, and Prince Richter leads the invasion with his giant castle, which also harbors his people. Richter has two generals, Balbus and Liza, who would do anything to serve him, as they are his trusted companions. Out of the entire trilogy, those are the best generals for the main antagonist, I'll get to them later. Anyway, at the same time, we have the main character Kazuya and his best friend Kyoshiro returning to Earth after a two-year space expedition to search for a new source of energy for Earth, and it is the Daimolite. Their spaceship, the Daimobik, transforms into their main lab. That lab doesn't say we are not afraid of the enemy, I don't know what is. Professor Izumi commands it with his eccentric family, Nana, Okane, and Kairo. They use the Daimolite as the energy source to power up the super robot, Daimus. And Kazuya will be the pilot as his late father made it for him. That is the first notable change in the series. It is not a robot with five pilots. It looks different from Compatler V and Voltus V. Kazuya can pilot the robot in a freestyle way, so when he uses the karate moves, Daimus will mimic them. The ultimate recipe for a kick-ass hero. The melee moves for Daimos made everything more effective. They are more on the simple side, but I love them regardless, as they are all karate themed and the finishing punch is so satisfying. And throughout the anime, Daimos learns more attacks and finishing moves. Back to the first battle. There is already a predicament among Bomb as Richter's sister, Princess Erika, is missing. They show the Richter being shocked and worried. That is amazing, from the first episode, the anime portrayed the villain as someone with feelings and can get vulnerable, but Richter contains himself to not lose face in front of his people. So Daimus wins the first battle and sees Princess Erika and rushes to rescue her, and you can tell, it is love at first sight. This is the best first episode of the entire trilogy, hands down. I know the reason why the aliens are invading, showing the softer side of them while still leaving many questions. But is that the full story? No! And you get to know the core of the plot in the first five episodes, which are the introduction arc if you may. 
So the anime doesn't hook you with the traditional episodic formula and then it changes. It doesn't need to do that anymore. Compatler V and Voltus V normalized that evolution gradually with a bit and switch so that Daimus can go straight to the point. You can't be part of the robot romance without a central theme, and in this anime it is acceptance, and can be reached by love or understanding and can result in death and destruction when denied. All of that is projected flawlessly through the siblings Richter and Erika. Richter refuses to understand human beings, while Erika fell in love with one. Then you can see each of their ideology branches to other characters. What triggered this war is a simple meeting. In episode 5, it's not a spoiler, it's basically the beginning of the story. The Bomb Empire wanted to meet with humans on their moon base. King Leon, the father of Richter and Erika, hopes to live on Earth in harmony with humans. And everything was going smoothly during the meeting. Then he was poisoned and killed, and you know something fishy is going on. This pushed Richter into madness. When Erika tried to stop him, Kazuya's father was shot and killed. Showing that early in the story is the best thing this anime ever did. Now I care about both sides reaching peace as soon as possible as I know for a fact some snakes were involved in creating this war. Erika falling in love with Kazuya opened her eyes that human beings are not all savages. Their journey is a tough one as they continuously get separated because their sides are fueled with vengeance and hate. Classic tale of tragic romance. They only want to be together and live in peace, and it breaks my heart whenever they miss each other. It's not supposed to be hard, but as long as ego, politics, and war exists, it will blind love and understanding. And so, simple natural desires are never easy. Also, it is refreshing that the love storyline is with the protagonists, unlike in Kapatler V and Voltus V where it was solely with the antagonists. There are many paradoxes within Bomb and Earthlings. For instance, Erika's nanny, Margarete, understands her love, so she helps her to reach her goal and be with Kazuya. On the other hand, Miwa, the leader of the Earth's army, lacks the understanding of the bomb people and wants to kill all of them. When they are close to a peace deal, Miwa always ruins it, giving Richter more reason to hate humans. So you get the ultimate evil on the supposed good human side and the motherly good in the supposed evil alien side and that broke the idea of the apparent good versus evil as there isn't such a thing, it is always shades of grey and I can safely say that Miwa is more sinister than the invading aliens. I mention this in almost every video, I love when episodes focus on the villains and Daimus is the best in doing that, way better than Voltus V. I think 80% of the anime is about Bomb, to a point where I believe this anime is their story. It starts with them and it ends with them. You see Bomb so much to a point where you love them more than the human characters. I yearn for the episode where they can live in peace and finally find a home. Their problem is wrong leaders with the wrong timings, and you hate seeing them get killed or have a giant misunderstanding which makes them go to the dark side. Every time this happens, I hope they get to their senses because I know they are good at heart. The anime took its time to show their perspective, so as a viewer I understand them and I want both sides to feel the same about each other. And when that happened in the end, it was filled with sacrifices, tears, relief and beauty. The characters are the leading example of why the Robot Romance trilogy gets better with each installment and they nailed all the characters this time. I love every one of them from the heroes to the villains. Kazuya and Erika are accurately the same, a valid reason why they love each other. They both seek compassion, love and ultimately peace. They are badasses in their own way, Kazuya uses his karate skills only when necessary and Erika's power is her will to lead and give hope for everybody. At first she is not like that, she was weak, a pushover and even afraid to tell Kazuya her true identity. However, she gradually evolves because of the horrors of her journey. Kazuya and Erika have the ultimate dilemma, should they pick their race and family or be with the one they love. However, in a beautiful turn of events, they are seeking to eliminate this useless ultimatum and not sacrifice anything. It will be a hellish road, and it was, but they took the idea of a dream and turned it into a reality instead of just dreaming about it. The human side characters are the most charming in the series. The comic reliefs are not annoying, thank god. Okane, Kairo and Nana are funny and never overstay their welcome. Although poor Okane, she can't even cook a decent meal without being destroyed in the end. 
Kyoshiro is Kazuya's right-hand man. He is a skeptic and most of the time, not always, he is the voice of reason. And they clash heads multiple times, which adds to their brotherhood. Plus he's a samurai. Now that is a duo not to be messed with, a karate master and a samurai. There are some episodic standalone episodes that focus on each character. Because I love them so much, they are honestly one of my favorites. Like when an obsessive girl that Koshiro knows shows up and wants to marry him, however, she doesn't pick up all the signals that the feelings aren't mutual, it was funny, and everyone was out of character. It reminds me of the Zubina shopping episode from Eisenberg. As I said, everyone is charming. Let's not forget about the villains. For over 20 years, Richter is my favorite antagonist in the trilogy. Trust me, this sentiment changes all the time, as I love all three in the series, but most of the time I lean towards Richter more. We learn more about who he is early in the story, and unlike Erika, he caved to the dilemma and chose one side. Memorable moments like when he discovers that Erika loves Kazuya and denounces her as his sister made me cry. He was holding his tears because ultimately he loves her but chooses the path of leading his people as he goes to a darker path and eventually finds the light when it's too late for him. A wonderful character. And comes my mixed aspect from the series, the evil side characters. And I'm glad to say that I love them this time. Balbus and Raisa are perfect in their roles. I hated them so much because of the vile things they have done, and they were never annoying or boring like the ones from Voltus V and Compatler V. When the story flips upside down, somehow I started to love them. I don't know how they did it, I understood why they did what they did, which is going the extra mile to serve Richter. Good or bad, they have a purpose of securing a new home for Bomb. Showing their families, their eventual sacrifices are all passionate and gut-wrenching. But my favorite character from all sides, easily, is Margarete. Oh my god, 90% of the scenes I wept in were because of her. Crying over the body of Erika and willing to take a beating to protect her? You, you can't hate her! I don't think Erika survived her hardships if it wasn't for her. She is the mother of the series and whenever she's in danger, I get an anxiety attack as I want her to survive. Everyone is unique in Daimus, and I care about all of them, except for Miwa. I hate this little xenophobic devil. Whenever Kazuya beats him up, I'm like, screw your pacifist ideals, make an exception, and kill this guy. Full set of emotions when I think about the characters. That's what you call good writing. The art peaked with Daimus. The bomb designs are a combination of Campbell and Boazan. Angel wings, the winged cobra like tiaras, and Richter is looking mesmerizing with the long hair. Balbus and Ryza look distinct with different wing colors. The human characters, especially Kazuya, feels like a gonna guy design. Pencil lines are spread throughout the series. Erika is the classic 70s anime design. And the main base is my preferred one in the trilogy. Daimus, though, not bulky, I fell in love with it, and it fits what it can do a giant karate robot. I don't think he can forget how it looks after seeing it. Well, I didn't. What shines the most is the monster designs. Those look spectacular. All of them deserve to be a high quality statue. They have so much going on as they are not simple designs. And yes, there are some beautiful stupid ones. This is the perfect package of art design. The animation is also excellent. Maybe because Daimus focuses more on hand-to-hand -hand combat and as a result, the animation feels smoother than usual. The non-robot animation? No, that's good quality. Any fighting scene that has Kazuya or Kyoshiro is impactful, fast, with a decent amount of blood. Now that's a bonus I never thought I would get. Lastly is the music. And I'm happy that there isn't a restock soundtrack from previous entries. It is a brand new one and it still did not surpass Compatler V, but it's a close one. Multiple tracks are heartfelt and some stick with you after watching the anime. And like I said before, I cried in numerous scenes, and it all thanks to Margarete and the soundtrack. Finally, we have the opening. Now that is something I'm always giving crap for. It's my favorite opening in the trilogy. You can't choose who you love, okay? It's not a somber song, but there is a glimpse of it. I see the opening perfectly fits the tone of the anime. You know in Suburba Tizen where eventually you turn off the battle animation? We all did this, don't lie. Whenever I play as Daimus, I must turn the battle animation at least once so that for the rest of the turn, the Daimus opening music is playing. Anyone who played the games will tell you that this is a sign that you cherish a specific opening.
I will not go deep into spoilers this time as I explained everything I want to talk about. So I will focus on the ending, which is what you call untraditional, especially for the 70s robot genre. The gears of the ending were set in motion when it's revealed that the new King of Bomb, Olban, was the one who poisoned King Leon. Thus, this war was built on a lie. Richter finds out, and they are trying to kill him, so he flees the castle with his generals. All of this happens at episode 34, and I'm like, wait a minute, this happens now? There are 10 episodes left. Balbus becomes good and dies protecting Kazuya because he believes he's the one who will save Bomb from Olban, one of the best moments in the anime. Ryza sacrifices her life to save Richter and I'm thankful that Ryza doesn't love Richter and be all annoying. If you can't surpass the Garuda Mia story, don't even bother, otherwise you'll pull a Katarine and no one wants that, so that's a huge plus. Anyway, fast forward to the end. Daimos and the heroes reach the bomb colony to destroy the Olban rule. Erika is pretending to marry him to stab him at the wedding and she fails and Margaret dies. So many things are happening and I'm both thrilled and crying. Olban gets killed by Richter and says that if he dies, the colony will fly straight to the Jupiter gas and destroy the entire bomb population. Richter is still refusing to accept the help of Earthlings as he is yet to understand that they are willing to help. He's still blind and Erika begs him to see the truth. So in the end, he sees Kazuya trying to sacrifice his life to reach the colony's engine. He is shocked and finally understands the real side of humanity and the fog of misunderstanding fades. He flees to the engine and whispers to the fallen Kazuya to take care of his sister and finally pushes the colony away from Jupiter. After that, they see him piloting a small aircraft straight to Jupiter and they are begging him to stop because the war is over. He sees things differently though. He realized that he killed so many earthlings and can't forgive himself, so he is taking justice into his own hands and commits suicide as a punishment. That is a different ending from the rest of the trilogy because there isn't a final battle. It ended with everyone banding together to save the bombs. Daimus got destroyed when Kazuya was trying to reach the engine, not because of an epic battle. Humans and bombs need to accept each other as members of this universe to coexist. It is through love, portrayed by Kazuya and Erika, and understanding, finally realized with Richter's final moments. Both of these elements go hand in hand and can reach the same conclusion, acceptance. And now the marathon is over. I love the entire trilogy. Each one has something special to me, from childhood nostalgia to why the Super Robot Tyson series is the most loved game franchise in my country. They all complete each other and kept getting better. The team did not stay on the same level, they improved everything as they went along and they never repeated the same mistakes. People always say how these old anime are a product of their time. So what? To me they are not old, nothing is. Everything is timeless, good or bad. Plus 70s anime always feels like the previous decade to me, as I grew up watching anime in the 80s. So that's a biased perspective, like all of my videos. It is always an event whenever those three robots are in a Super Robot Tyson game. They have one of my favorite villains of all time, my favorite music, childhood moments that will never leave me. Even subtle things like Osumo Uchikawa voicing all three villains in the series is something I admire so much because there is a ton of care and detail the team has put into this trilogy. They wanted to make history and change the genre forever. They were successful, earning the name the series bears, the robot romance.